Uh, welcome back to another football edition of Behind the Blaze. I'm your host, Coach Emily Coleman, and today we have special guest, Senior Blaze. Jalen Anderson. How you doing that, Jalen? Last week, huge victory over previously undefeated uh, Green Hill, or we did have to go on the road to get that W. How do you feel? I feel good. You know, we got to leave those things in the past, though. We got bigger things this week, bigger, bigger triumphs ahead. What was the biggest thing for you, SDV, going into that game that you wanted to focus on and that you knew you had to get done for us to get the win? Well, uh, th- this team, they, they tend to throw the ball a lot more, so I had to be on my A game. All of us did, you know. Austin, we didn't have Trey because he's injured, but Austin, Jamison, Emery, Lark, we all had to be on our game. You know, they was going to throw the ball, so be ready for that. Also, when you left out, senior safety Jonah Brown had a huge game. Right. Defensively scored a touchdown special teams. So as an overall team goal, what do you think sparked the second half that pushed us over the top that you haven't seen the previous week? You know, we, um, we made a pretty big mistake right going into that second half, so... I think it all just kind of set a flame, you know. We we came in thinking that the you know, we we knew this team was ten and zero, but we knew we was better than this team. We just had to come in, go hard, finish what we started. Yep. Um, of course, this round you get a rematch with crosstown rival Riverdale. What the biggest thing you think you needed to adjust from when we played them five week, four or five weeks ago to now this time around? Um, unfortunately, when we played them the first time, I feel like we didn't tackle nearly as well as we know how to do and I think that is a big part of this game you know we got to bring them down and on defense we probably got to get some more turnovers to help out the offense so we can put more points on the board okay uh we also forgot to go what position you play so what position do you play for the blaze I play cornerback DB this is your senior season second year being a starter what do you think is the biggest improvement from your in your game from last year compared to this year as a senior uh first starting last year I feel like I was much more timid uh I, I wasn't Wayne as much. I wasn't nearly as strong as I am now. I was scared to tackle, uh, scared to jump up for the ball, but I think that's much improved now this year. I feel like, you know, I got a little bit more dog in me. I got to make some plays, help out our team. Got you. One of the, we knew one of the strengths coming into this year was we have uh, pretty much three starters back from last year in the secondary, you know, leading the way. So what's it been like, you know, for you start out nine, eight seniors we had in our defensive back group you know, how is it playing along, you know, with those guys on the field with you that pretty much all of them are seniors except two? Right. So I, I've been playing with these guys for really five years now since they grade. These are my brothers. So, you know, we all play together. We all have good chemistry. And even the ones like the younger than us, so you know, um, Lark and Emery, um, we all have good chemistry. We all train together. We all work hard together. We all bleed together. You know what I mean? So. It's, it's, it's been good. It's been great. Okay. Notice you said you've only been playing together since eighth grade. So tell everybody, you know, where you're originally from and how you got into the black men community. All right. So I, um, I'm originally born in Germany because my dad was in the military. And then we moved to Knoxville. I lived in Knoxville till seventh grade. Kobe year, we moved to black men middle school. I played uh, one year f- football. I've, I played football my entire life since I was around six years old. Um, Played eighth grade football at Blackman. I played freshman football at Blackman and the rest of my football career at Blackman as well. So have you always been a defensive player or when you were younger, did you get to play some on the offensive side of the ball? Or how, does that look? how did that look? When did you officially make the full-time switch that, okay, I'm defense only? Well, when I was younger, um, it, it didn't matter as much when you were smaller to be a running back. So I was, I was messing people up as running back, youth league. But middle school, I tried to play receiver. I was a good route runner. I just couldn't catch. So, you know, we had to switch to DB, and DB spin was wasn't working out for me for right now. Got you, got you. Now, was there growing up? Was there any other sports that were ever you know your main interest, or was football always number one, or, or was football just the only sport that you ever like got into growing up? So, believe it or not, I was actually very good at baseball until around the eighth grade. I, I quit because it just wasn't. I didn't love baseball. I loved football. I was really good at baseball. My team. We, um, at the time, we, we were a travel team. We went to Dominican Republic. We was beating kids over there. Uh, some of those kids, they were quote unquote 12. They looked like they was 25, throwing <laughs> 95 mile per hour fastballs. But, you know, we was doing what we got to do. But, yeah, baseball was my first love. So, and what position did you play in baseball? I was a center fielder and I was a dog. <laughs> <laughs> center fielder. Interesting. All right. So, since you made the full-time switch to football and you know your first two years of course were under different staff here in high school um different position coach what do you think the biggest change was from your freshman and sophomore year in high school to last year to junior and this year as a senior um 
my biggest change I feel like was uh, I feel like I wasn't really looked on upon as like a a main unit per se. I I didn't the coach Tigard, you know, I was a younger guy, so he kind of put me to the side along with a lot of other guys. So junior year when Coach Kreisky had first come, it was very new to me because. I was a, a dependent on player, you know, I had to step up and try to be a leader best I could, and that was new to me. Just the first workout you remember when Coach Christ came, I think it was end of February, early March, and he had y'all out early mornings, you know, conditioning. What was the first thing you noticed that was different from the staff and what he brought to what you had been used to the previous two years? So Coach T, he was kind of a jokester. Um, it was, it was definitely much different having Coach Kreisky come in really serious, but you know, that's what he had to do. He had to set a tone because if he would have came in joking, we would have took him as a joke. So I, you know, he's loosened up now because like we know who he is, but I think he had to make a good first impression. So I, I didn't think too much of it. I knew he was going to be a, a good coach for us at the beginning. And what do you think the hardest thing for you to get used to was as a player um, switching head coaches? You know, fortunately for me, I didn't really play until junior year so I didn't I didn't really have a great connection with coach T but um when coach K had came it felt like I, I was just like I had a brand new slate and it was it was really easy for me to get used to him because it was all I really knew who it was all I really knew who to play for essentially okay that makes sense of course this is your second year uh working with me in the DB uh, defensive back room of course you are counted on as you know one of our leaders now how do you think your development has gone there, you know, as far as understanding what the defense is trying to do compared to this year and last year, you know, adding a bunch of new stuff as we just keep building? It was, um, at first it was pretty difficult, especially like the, the new coverages that we had first started to learn, like um, a while back. First year, you guys that came, it was a little frustrating because we didn't really know what to do, especially like me, Trey, Jameson, we were, we didn't really know where the direction of the team was going, but once we kind of got used to everything it was it was really easy as very easy for us and I think it now it's like it's second nature essentially we know we know what we're doing and that's how it is you know as it's crazy I already say this that there's only you know a maximum four weeks left in the season of your high school career you know possibly so what does the next step look like for Jalen Anderson as far as you know continuing to play football or just going to school or where are you at that in your process so as of this moment i'm committed to davison college in north carolina division one football team um i'm planning to study business analytics i want to be an entrepreneur someday um i'm not really sure where i want to go with that but um you know of course i want to make a lot of money i want to play football at the next level so uh, it was a good fit for me very highly academic school and that's where i want to go um what was it about Davidson that made you sit like, okay, there's there are the people who want me. This is where I want to go. This is how far I want to be for my family and my friends. What ultimately led you to that decision? So Davidson's location is located probably 15, 20 minutes out of Charlotte. So I have a lot of family in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, like I mentioned before, it's a really highly academic school, which is really important for me. I want a degree that can go pretty far. Um, I want to go to business school, and they have a pretty good business program. Um, and it has it's Division One football. They got decent money. Curry went there, so you know he'd be getting the players right and stuff. So I wanted a place where that had a budget. I didn't want to just go to some place where the dorms weren't nice and stuff. You know, I, I wanted to be taken care of. And the, the coaching staff, they seemed like they really wanted me. So gotcha, it's pretty good. Well, of course, huge game this Friday. What do you think the three keys are as a team that we need to? If we hit these three things, you'll you're guaranteed Blackman gets a W. What do you think those three things are? You know, one I think is determination. I feel like we gotta set a goal. We we know what we gotta do. We just gotta execute. Um, two, I, I would say is focus. We gotta keep our head locked in because there's a lot of distractions, especially on social media. People say a lot of things. Sometimes it's hard to not feed into that type of thing. But um, three, I would just say we just gotta play ball. You know, we 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 play football. We've we've been doing the same thing for. 11 weeks now you know we just got to do what we know how to do instead of you know folding when it's we're under pressure you know it's a tough game um tough sport and this is a rivalry so we just got to play out and do what we got to do got you well before you leave i do have to ask you one more question i did forget to ask last week but i've asked every other person that's been on the show except Jaden guy last week all right so football team is hosting a two-on-two basketball tournament 
hypothetically. Of course, it is your turn to pick a teammate for the tournament. If you had to pick, and yes, you do have peer pressure because certain eyes in the room. But one answer was dominating for about five weeks in a row until John Dragu came on the show and he finally switched the switched up the theme. So in a two-on-two tournament, you have to pick one teammate to be on your team to win the whole tournament. Who are you picking? I'm picking Ethan Carson. Oh, I think that's the first time Ethan's been selected on the show. So congratulations. Appreciate you picking him. I'm sure he appreciates it. Shout out to Ethan. Shout out to Ethan. Um, hopefully he'll heal up by then. <laughs> he'll get the joke once he hears the podcast. All right. Um, thank you guys for listening. Uh, Behind the Blaze podcast. Hope to see you this Friday at Riverdale High School uh, for a huge second round playoff matchup. Go Blaze.